Turning now to your community focus, the race for Rhode Island's second congressional district is getting down to the wire. Here to talk about his campaign to replace Congressman Jim Langeman, Democrat Seth Magaziner, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So I actually want to start with a brand new attack ad that's been out on the airwaves. It criticizes you for marching alongside someone who is holding a defund the police sign. I believe we have some of that video here. This also came up last week at our debate live at PPAC, the WPRI 12 debate. What's your message to the people at home? Are you a supporter of defunding the police? No, that's ridiculous. Listen, I'm running for Congress because I want to fight for working people in Rhode Island. I want to take on the big oil and drug companies that are overcharging people. I want to fight for higher wages, for better benefits, uh, and to protect fundamental rights like a woman's right to choose, which have been stripped away. We're now getting into the last couple of weeks of the campaign and the false ads are flying. I certainly have never supported defunding the police. As a matter of fact, uh, as state treasurer, it is literally my job to fund the police. Our office delivered more than $100 million to law enforcement agencies in Rhode Island last year alone. And if the best attack that the Republicans can find against me is that one time I walked by someone who was holding a sign that I disagreed with, that's pretty weak stuff. Uh, I think it shows that they're worried that they can see that we're gaining momentum because people are responding to our message. I want to pick up on something else that you mentioned just then. Um, just today, you called on your Republican opponent, Alan Fung, to return some contributions made by oil companies to a super PAC that's been supporting his campaign. You just said it in your first uh, remark, and you've been saying it over and over again, those companies, oil and gas companies, are price gouging. Yeah. What specific evidence can you point to that they are price gouging well, right now? Billions of profits. In the first nine months of this year, the five big oil producers made more than $150 billion of profits. ExxonMobil is making more than $200 million a day of profits at the same time that Rhode Islanders are facing record high prices at the gas pump and on their home heating oil. And there's a clear contrast in this race. Uh, my opponent, Alan Fung, won't talk about price gouging by the big oil companies because he knows that they're funding those same attack ads that are being run against me. Um, I'm going to Washington to fight for working people, to take on the oil companies that are overcharging people at the gas pump, to take on the prescription drug companies that are overcharging people for their medicine. Uh, and my opponent won't talk about it because he knows that uh, they are funding his campaign. I want to talk about poll numbers. Our most recent poll showed you about six points behind mm -hmm. Alan Fung. You released internal polling uh, just a couple of weeks ago that showed you three points behind. Mm -hmm. Have you done any more internal polling? Not since then. Um, I will say, though, we're feeling a good surge of momentum as we head into these last few weeks. People are responding to the, our message. They are starting to tune in more and realize that there is a real set of differences between myself and Alan Fung. Uh, I have the guts to stand up to the oil companies and the drug companies. He doesn't. Uh, he has opposed the Affordable Care Act and said it should be overturned, even though 70,000 Rhode Islanders would lose their health insurance. I want to fight to preserve the Affordable Care Act and expand it to make health care more affordable. I have a record of standing up for a woman's right to choose here in Rhode Island. When we passed the Reproductive Privacy Act three years ago, he opposed that bill. So I think as more Rhode Islanders tune in and see that there are real contrasts between us, they recognize that I am on the side of working people in the state, and I will be in Congress as well, and we're seeing a good Good surge of momentum as a result. As I mentioned, we're getting down to the wire here. Um, you had Labor Secretary Marty Walsh campaigning for you just this weekend. Can yeah. we expect any other big names before Election Day? You know, potentially. Um, we're all looking forward to uh, welcoming the First Lady to Rhode Island on Wednesday, and I look forward to spending some time with her. But I'm really focused on talking with Rhode Islanders, making sure that Rhode Islanders understand our message that we're going to be fighting for them in Congress. Uh, it's Rhode Islanders who are going to decide this election, and so that is 100% where I'm focused. All right, that is all the time that we have. Democrat Seth Magaziner, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And he's going to be facing two opponents in this race, moderate Bill Gilbert, who we spoke with last week right here on 12 News at 4. You can catch that interview on WPRI.com. And coming up tomorrow on our Community Focus, we'll be speaking with Republican congressional candidate Alan Fung. That's right here tomorrow at 4.